Hey guys, it's Peter, and it's time to get into it about reality TV. Okay, so I promised you coming in March, I was going to bring the drama and talk about drama stories going on behind the scenes of your favorite reality TV shows. Also, I'm going to continue to do some recaps over here. I didn't know which story I was going to start with. I didn't know if I was going to cover all the people suing Bravo and Andy Cohen. I didn't know if I was going to talk about Raquel, Rachel suing Tom Sandoval and Ariana. I didn't know what I was going to talk about. I definitely did not think that I was going to talk about the breakup of uh, Jax Taylor and Brittany Cartwright. So that is what we're going to talk about today. Are you all ready? Ariana Grande. I'm Ariana Grande and I'm already ready and I need to get some lip gloss on before I start talking about this. So let's get into this. I follow all of, well not all of them, but I follow a lot of the uh, Bravo accounts, the Bravo like drama accounts on the YouTubes and the Instagrams and the Twitters, the Queens of Bravo, all that kind of stuff. I love all those. I follow many of them, right? So I was just kind of like scrolling through the Instagram the other day and I saw over on the Bravo Daily Dish that they had posted this, a picture of Jax Taylor and Brittany. I think this was 24 hours ago that they posted this. It was was, yeah, and it says underneath here, Brittany Cartwright and Jax Taylor are taking time apart as she moves into another home. Tap the link in the bio for everything she shared about where they stand in the relationship today. And then it has hashtag pump rules, hashtag the valley. Now, the reason why it says hashtag the valley is because there is a spinoff of Vanderpump Rules that is coming out, um, I believe, March 14th. I think it's coming out. That is called the valley. Okay. And it's with Jax Taylor and Brittany and their son and they live in a house in the valley and it has Kristen Doty and her boyfriend and it has a couple other couples that um, are living in the valley together and it's supposed to be a spinoff of Vanderpump Rules. In fact, there's supposed to be an episode or two on Vanderpump Rules, probably the week of the Valley, when Jack Taylor comes and he talks to Lisa Vanderpump, and that's kind of where the spinoff of the show is supposed to come from. I have to tell you, a lot of people are like, this show's gonna be horrible. My husband's even like, I'm not watching that. That show's gonna be horrible. I'm watching it. I'm ready for it, okay? I miss the drama of Vanderpump Rules back in the day. You know, I had this video scripted that I was gonna make over here for a long time, because I binge watched all 10 seasons of Vanderpump Rules. And, you know, it's interesting to me because I had all these points that I wanted to say in this video. And if you guys remember the last season that Jax was on, there was a scene at the very end when Jax and Lisa are standing in Tom Tom, and Jax makes some comment to Lisa Vanderpump, and he says to her, um, you know, something about my show. And she looks at him and she goes, this is not your show, Jax. This is my show. And, you know, so many people at the time were like, ooh, like he dissed Lisa. And like, this is Lisa's show and stuff. But let's just be for real, okay? Let's just be 100% real. Y'all. Ain't nobody coming to watch Vanderpump Rules for Lisa Vanderpump, okay? I love Lisa Vanderpump. I absolutely love her. And I have to tell you, as a long-time watcher of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Lisa Vanderpump was not my favorite housewife. She wasn't. It wasn't until I started watching Vanderpump Rules, because my husband, for years and years and years, right? He's like, Lisa's my favorite. I love Lisa so much, right? And I never really got it. We would like, I was like, I don't understand why you love her so much. Like, she was so rude and so nasty, <laughs> like Nene Leak said on the Real Housewives of Atlanta uh, reunion to Kenya Moore. That's the second time I said that reference today. I said, the, I said it the, the other time in my drama video today. But anyway, so rude and so nasty. And then she winks. I can't wink. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, but he, he loved Lisa. And I never really understood it. I mean, I didn't dislike Lisa, but I thought that she was, you know, I just thought she felt entitled and that she thought she was better than everybody else. When you watch Vanderpump Rules, you get a completely different side of Lisa, right? She's very caring. She's very compassionate. I love Lisa on Vanderpump Rules. But the reality is nobody's watching Vanderpump Rules for Lisa Vanderpump. They just aren't, okay? The reason why it's called Vanderpump Rules is because it's her restaurants that they all work in. But we're all watching for the drama, okay? And the reality is this, is that, and I understand why they got kicked off the show, okay? And, and I... I understand it greatly, okay, for the, all the allegations and everything that happened, and I stand behind that 100%. I do think it's interesting, though, because I do know that Stassi Schroeder was offered a uh, position on the new show, The Valley, too, okay? So Stassi and Kristen got kicked off of Vanderpump Rules for racist allegations. Jax Taylor was part of that as well, okay, like later for other things, and then it's like, okay, you served your time, now you're you're, you can come back, and you're not 
not a racist anymore? I'm confused. Okay, can somebody explain to me the rules of Bravo? You know, how you can come back. It's like, okay, Phaedra Moore, or Phaedra Moore, Kenya Moore. Phaedra, and, and listen, on Traders, I, I love Phaedra on, on Traders, okay? And getting, I'm not giving no Traders updates today because I don't want to ruin it for anybody that hasn't caught up, but I love Phaedra on Traders, okay? And Phaedra makes for great television, but Phaedra indirectly accused um, Candy Burris of drugging Portia. And I mean, that whole situation, which is why she got fired from Bravo, and also because it's like Andy Cohen and then Candy is like right underneath him. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the truth. But anyway, and then, you know, Candy's not gonna be on it this season. And then Phaedra goes to Married with Medicine. So it's like, okay, so what you did was, I mean, it's so crazy to me that with all these allegations and these lawsuits that are coming out right now that people are like, oh my God, like Bravo's being taken down and Bravo's bad. Bravo's been bad for a long time. If you're going to watch Bravo, you kind of know that. That's kind of what goes along with it, you know? It's like Ramona Singer, it was like she had all these racist allegations and, you know, she was banned from BravoCon. Do you think Ramona Singer's not going to be in another Bravo show? You think she's not going to do another Ultimate Girls trip? Of course she will. We know that, right? That's how Bravo works. You serve your penance, you do two or three, you know, years away, you're put on pause for a while, then they break you back, okay? That's what always goes on. Bravo has been problematic for a very, very long time. When you watch it, it's not that you agree with that. It's not that you condone it or co-sign it, because I 100% don't. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever, but it's the rules of Bravo. Bravo plays by a completely different set of rules, and that's been going on for a very, very long time. You know, I, I can tell you when I saw the announcement for The Valley, I got very excited because I missed the drama of the old cast of Vanderpump Rules, all right? But at the same time, my question was, why are they bringing back Jax and Kristen, who were kicked off the show for racist allegations? Does that not matter anymore? Is that okay? Like, okay, they've talked about it enough on podcasts, because there's 400 podcasts about Bravo now, so they can talk about it. So, to me, it was like, so the Bravo doesn't care about this anymore, right? And they also offered Stassi the role, too, and all three of them were kicked off the show. So what it means is that, and Stassi's been very vocal about the fact that she was offered a show, part of the show of the Valley, but she said she don't hang out with them anymore more like that, so there's no reason for her to be on the show, you know? I did think it was interesting, I just saw a picture recently of Tom Schwartz hanging out with uh, Stassi and Bo from Vanderpump Rules and like holding their new baby and things like that. What I was going to say was, it was interesting on that last season, I think it was season maybe eight of Vanderpump Rules, I actually have it all in my, new, in my notes, when um, Jack says to Lisa, he, he slips and says, my show, and she goes, this isn't your show, this is my show, right? The reality is, it kind of was Jack's show. Not just Jack's show, it was the cast show. It was really, it was Lisa's show because of the name, but nobody was watching for Lisa Vanderpump, okay? Everybody was watching for all the other people, and I have to be honest with you, when Jax and Brittany, like, they settled down and got married, and Stassi and Bo got engaged and all that kind of stuff, I was kind of over it at that point, right? Like, I really think at that point was when they should have split the show, and they should have done, like, a, a spinoff then and called it, like, Vanderpump, or, you know, the, the, the Vanderpump Rules Grows Up, and it should have been that old cast, and they should have recast an entire new cast of all new young people that were working in the restaurant because that was kind of I mean once they started getting you can you can see the change happen it's between the sixth and seventh season when Tom Sandoval buys a Mercedes you know Ariana and Sheena and Brittany and all them are carrying in every episode and every scene of every episode a different Louis Vuitton bag that costs three to five thousand dollars a different one in every scene and they're buying new houses or buying new apartments I mean you and they're getting paid twenty five to seventy five thousand dollars an episode they're making, you know, upwards of a couple million dollars a year just from the show, not to mention their, you know, appearances and their songs and things like that, right? So they're making huge amounts of money. There's no reason for them to be waiting tables at Sir anymore. Well, that was kind of the allure of Vanderpump Rules for years and years and years was they're working at Sewer, Sewer, <laughs> in the Sewer, at Sir. So they should have recast the show and or called it, kept Vanderpump Rules the same and called it Vanderpump Rules A New Generation or something like that. They should have done something. Well, that's really what they're doing with the Valley. And the Valley is taking the old people, okay? Like Kristen and like Jax and Brittany and whatever and bringing them onto a new show because they were really the ones that brought the drama to begin with that made it so interesting. You know, now Raquel is coming out, or Rachel, and she's insinuating that Tom Sandoval, this is for a whole other video, that Tom Sandoval is... Um, 
that he did this to keep relevancy, that he had the relationship with her just to keep relevancy for the show because he was so worried that the show was going to be dead. I would not be surprised if this is the last season of Vanderpump Rules. I mean, my husband and I were watching it last night. I was like, <laughs> By the way, can we talk about the reunion of the Real Housewives of Miami for a second? Oh, my God. R Miami has earned its place back, okay? Beverly Hills needs to do a completely new recasting. They need to get Heather Dubrow because she's building a house in Beverly Hills. They need to put her on the cast. And they need to get rid of a couple of those women over there. And they need to recast Beverly Hills. It's boring. It, 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 it bore a snake. It's so boring, okay? But I have to tell you... Um, Miami is hot to trot. It is back. I love Miami. And the reunion was, did not disappoint. So anyway, so I think this is them trying to revamp it. I think this might be the last season of Vanderpump Rules. Because this whole season is all about Scandal, right? Which we knew it was going to be. But, like, everybody's over it because they've been hearing it. I mean, this, this, this show was filmed, like, three months after it came out. After Scandal came out. And so, it's, like, all old news at this point. We know all this kind of stuff, right? Like, when... Uh, Rachel gets out of treatment like just this week's episode Tom and Tom are having a conversation about are you guys going to try to work it out? We know they get back together and they break up back in May. We know that already, right? So it's not interesting. I mean, reality TV in the world where they're constantly doing interviews and going on podcasts and stuff is not as interesting anymore. So I don't know that I think that the old school Vanderpump Rules is going to last. But anyway, Brittany and Jax apparently broke up, okay? But there's news after news. So I went over and People Magazine put out an article. It says, Jax Taylor and Brittany Cartwright separate after four years of marriage. Pray for us. The Vanderpump Rules alumni wed on 2000, in 2019 and share two-year-old son Cruz Michael Couchy. <coughs> which is Jax's real name. Jason Couchy is his real name. The Vanderpump Rules alumni who are set to take part in the Bravo spinoff The Valley this spring have announced their separation four years after they wed in 2019. Now, when I saw this, okay, two things went through my head. Number one, Jax and Brittany have separated 942,000 times, okay? So, am I surprised about this? No. Do I think that Jax Taylor has the ability to change? I hope so for Britney because I love Britney. I mean, I really do at my core. You know, there's... I, I really like Brittany a lot. And so for her, I think she deserves, like Little Town said, a better man. I hope Jax has turned into a better man. But would I be surprised if they separate it? No, it wouldn't surprise me at all. My second thought was, is this a PR stunt? Because this is happening literally a month right before The Valley comes out. Okay? And Vanderpump Rules, people are over Vanderpump Rules. So is this all just a marketing scheme? A PR stunt? Is this all just a PR stunt? That's what I really thought. Cartwright announced the news Thursday on the pair's joint podcast, When Reality Hits. Many of you guys have been asking me about Jax and I and our relationship, she begun. I just think it's important to be real and honest with you guys because our life is definitely... We've shared so much of our life with you guys, so I feel like I don't want to seem like I'm lying or anything like that, so I think it's important for me to say this. I know in my last podcast, I alluded to many marriages go through rocky times, she continued. Yes. Marriages in general are very hard, and I've had a particularly rough year this past year. Jax and I are taking time apart, and I made the decision to move into another home to take some space for the sake of my mental health. Nothing how she didn't want to share uh, specific details about the matter. The Bravo celebrity said the breakup is still very hard to talk about. I'm taking one day at a time, she added. I don't know what the future holds, but right now my focus is on being the best mom to Cruz, and I love you guys. Pray for us, and everything will be just fine. We're good. People has reached out to Taylor and Cartwright's reps for comment. Um, it goes on and talks about how they met and all this kind of stuff, right? So I'm like sitting here watching this. I'm like, this is interesting. But then today, that was Thursday, okay? It's Friday. This came out Thursday. This is Friday. This is like uh, Marcus Jordan and Larsa Pippa breaking up and being back together the next day and him giving her a promise ring, okay? Then I saw on Bravo Babe on Twitter this video, okay, of Jax Taylor being interviewed on the street. And Bravo Babe put, I tried to convince myself it wasn't PR for their new show, dot, dot, dot. And on here, they're asking Jax Taylor in this interview, okay, on the street. They're saying, like, are things good between you guys or whatever? And he's like, yeah, we're we're working things out. She's back home. So this news came out on Thursday and already on Friday, she's already back home after she'd have moved out into a new home. She didn't say, oh no, I'm staying with a friend. I'm staying with a relative. We went back to Kentucky for a week. I took the kid back to Kentucky for a week. She didn't say none of that. She said, we are in a new home, a new house. Okay. You're in a new home, but now you're back with Jax 24. This is a PR stunt. This is a hundred percent a PR stunt. Okay. 
I mean, everybody's going to believe it anyway, because then it's going to get people to watch it and be like, oh, are they going to break up on the show? Is this going to happen on the show? It's already getting people hyped up for the show already. Well, I have to be honest with you, it's not like this is news to me that people fake relationship problems, okay, to PR stun a show. And it's not news to me that maybe Britney and Jax did break up at one point and got back together the next day. That kind of seemed like the condition of the relationship from the beginning. I wish them the best. Okay, for Brittany and that little boy, I really do. And Jax Taylor, too. I mean, I hope Jax changes over time and becomes a better man. I mean, if you can write a country music song about it, you can live it. True story all day long. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.